Hey, <laughs> this is Ron with the radiologictechnologist.com. Clearly on my day off, running kits around to all the different uh, sporting uh, practices and tryouts and whatnot. Um, thanks for joining me. I am making this real quick video because as I watch the uh, Facebook groups like I often do and see questions that I, I think deserve an, an in-depth answer, I have found one today. And it's uh, it's kind of complicated. So, I mean, I tried to answer it on the group, but um, it's somebody saying they're a second year student. And uh, this person says, I've come to the conclusion most places of employment prefer you be dual modality technologists. I'm not interested in CT at all. I'd love to hear some advice regarding nuke med, MAM, MAMO, cath lab interventional, and echo. Pros, cons, length of school, willingness of places to cross train you on the job. Salary, easy, easy, difficult to find employment. Uh, I mean, that covers about six articles that I've written. So um, I just want to try and give you an answer real quick. Uh, the basics anyway. Um, let's start from the top. Uh, nuclear medicine is its own program. It's at least a two-year program. Uh, back in the day, they were talking about making it a three-year program. You have to apply to it. You have to get accepted, and then you have to do It's just like x-ray. You have to go to classes. You have to do clinicals. It's very hard work. Um, the cool thing about Nuke Med, beside it being its own radiological animal, so to speak, is you have to be a Nuke Med tech to get into PET scanning, and PET scanning is kind of the new frontier on uh, molecular scanning is really cool and it's going to grow a lot and it's already growing a lot um, in a way it's kind of resurrecting nuclear medicine and early on there was some debate debate about whether a ct tech was going to do it or a nuke med tech or both but it's, it's strictly nuke med now it's going to do it and so uh, if you ever want to get into pet scanning you got to go into nuclear medicine um, and it's its own program because this question is kind of looks like it might be centered around who cross trains and you, you, you might be able to find a place that will cross-train you on a lot of this stuff, but it's r really rare on some of it. So Nuke Med is really rare. In fact, I don't think you can even cross-train on that anymore. Back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, you could have probably cross-trained and then sat for the boards. But anymore, you have to go to a certified program. Uh, mammography, you can completely train on the job for that. But there's also a lot of, like, weekend programs, week-long programs. Um, the local community college where I'm at has, a, I think, a three-day intensive. But typically, those things are only the didactic portion, the classroom portion. You still have to do um, several hundred, if I remember right, uh, mammograms yourself. And then once you've done all those, um, let's just call them clinicals, once you've done those, then you can sit for the exam. Um, you ask about cath lab slash interventional. Now, cath lab is different than interventional radiology. Cath lab is usually in the cardiac department. Uh, sometimes that falls under the director who's running the radiology department, but not always. Um, I have never ran a radiology department that included the cath lab. It was always separate and ran under cardiology. Uh, vascular labs sometimes flip-flops like that. Vascular can fall uh, under radiology or it can fall under cardiology. You know, radiology and cardiology um, sometimes play well, sometimes they don't because those, you know how you know, doctors are. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so if you're interested in the cath lab, that's probably going to be outside of radiology. You need to check on where you think you're going to work since you say you're a second year student to see what they do. Um, cath lab is a great job, pays great money, uh, but it takes a lot of call. You typically have two or three teams of cath lab um, employees and they rotate taking call because they're on call 24 seven basically. Um, you may have team A who is working eight to five on Monday and then somebody has to take call that night. It could be team A or it could be team B. And then the next day, another eight to five team and then somebody covering the call. But the cath lab has to be available 24 seven because you never know when you're going to need to stint somebody. So um, cath lab is high money, big money, but high burnout, like six months to a year burnout is what I've seen very commonly among cath lab teams. Um, interventional is within the radiology department. IR or interventional radiology is special procedures that are done in your interventional suite. Um, and it's a lot like the cath lab, uh, but the radiologists are performing the procedures instead of cardiologists. Um, IR typically is trained in, in house. There's not that I know of, there's not an IR program you can really go to. Um, but I've seen, uh, programs, uh, in-house training programs last up to two years for interventional radiology. So it depends on where you're going. It depends on how much they do. 
Um, one of the places I was at most recently, Harley, you know, they just did a few things that kind of specialized on that. They didn't do a lot of different interventionals, um, but some of the bigger hospitals do a whole bunch of stuff and it's very complicated. Um, interventional can make good money just like cath lab and it's on call just like cath lab. Um, it just, I mean, I gotta be careful saying it's not as busy because that depends on your facility. But I mean, the cath lab is just running 24 seven interventional, not so much. There's not as many procedures typically done. Um, now, you know, I can't speak for giant 500 plus bed hospitals that, you know, are probably running their interventional labs Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then doing stuff after hours, pick lines and whatever. So it's just going to depend on where you're at. But interventional can be trained on the job. Then you asked about echo. Echo sonography is a whole separate program than general sonography. Typically, general sonography only teaches you general ultrasound um, protocols. That excludes vascular and echo. Now, some general programs do include vascular. The ultrasound program I went to uh, in Phoenix did not include vascular, and I had to learn that on the job once I graduated. Echo is a whole separate school. Um, last time I checked, I think... There were about 18 months. It wasn't a full two years like general ultrasound, but that may change. And it depends on the program you choose. Echo can make a ton of money. Um, and so can ultrasound. And it opens up doors for being on call and making callback money, which is a whole other topic. And you can look on my website, the radiologictechnologist.com. I've got articles about all this stuff we're talking about. If you go to the site map page, you can kind of see the list of all the titles. And it will help direct you to where you're, you're looking at. Um, pros, cons, length of school. I've kind of gone over some of that. Uh, willingness of places to cross train you. This has been a big pet peeve of mine for a long time because there's a lot of facilities that will not cross train. Um, they like to lock you into where you're at and they're very narrow minded. And, and if you, if you saw a video from, uh, Z dog the other day, he really went on a big tirade about, um, how the medical professionals are being treated in this latest COVID um, epidemic and how we're kind of getting stepped on and we're being sent home so the hospital can save money. And um, I totally agree with him. And that's the same thing. You know, he's pretty much defending the nurses and the doctors. I think the same thing applies to the rad techs because without the rad techs, these hospitals would not be open. If you don't have a lab and radiology, you are not open. And so the days of sending rad techs home and, and forcing them to use their own PTO are going to come to an end. Um, I, I think it's time to start considering unionizing. I'll probably get some um, hate mail for that, but some of us stand up and some of us get fired for standing up. And uh, unless we unionize and start getting serious about taking care of our profession, because we're, for some reason, we've never really gotten a big lobbyist group effort going like the nurses have. That's why the nurses get what they want, because they have a huge lobby group. Um, and you know, they've, they've taken it all the way, you know, that's, that's a whole nother, a whole nother subject. I got off track here. Sorry. Soapbox. Um, so places don't cross train and they should, because that's a big part of creating employee satisfaction and employee uh, loyalty to the company. Um, a lot of hospitals don't want to, don't want to pay the money to cross train. I, I cross trained a CT tech and MRI within the past five years, and it cost me about $50,000. It cost me 25 ish to pay her for training uh, while she was training for six months. And then I paid somebody to backfill her because I couldn't leave the staff shorthanded for six months. Um, I want to say, yeah, it was six months. It's three months to cross train CT, at least under my reign, and it's six months to cross train MRI to do it properly. Um, so 50000 so a lot of hospitals have just pay somebody from outside to come in who already knows what they're doing and plop them in. And the, and the positives to that, and I wrote an article, big, long article about cross-training. It's probably about 9,000 words. Um, the benefits to that is they they get somebody to hit the ground running fast, so they think. But it costs them custo uh, pay, um, employee loyalty uh, and employee satisfaction because there's people that have been there for a long time that would like to get into MRI. And that new person doesn't necessarily know your EMR doesn't know your patient flow, doesn't know your community, uh, doesn't know your staff, they have to get to know the staff and work up a working relationship. So um, I, I did a video not too long ago about what you should do when you're checking out a job. 
how you should investigate the hospital where you want to work. And these were some of the questions I put in that video because you need to ask in your interview, do you cross train? And not just do you cross train, but how many people a year do you cross train? Because if they say, yeah, we cross train, and then you say how many, and they go, oh, one every five years. Well, unless you're a five tech critical access hospital, that's insufficient. Um, I've been in hospitals with as many as 120 staff, and I can tell you I probably cross trained at least five a year. Uh, and, and I've cross trained X-ray to IR, X-ray to CT, CT to MR. Um, and we worked with some programs like Weaver State, who has an online ultrasound program. And we took an X-ray tech and put her in ultrasound. And she did most of her classes online, but did her clinicals for ultrasound at the site. So there's a, there's a lot of options that you can explore to cross-train on the job now that didn't used to be there. Weaver State has an online ultrasound program, for example, and I think they have an online nuclear medicine program, but I'm not sure. I remember we got a call once from a school saying, we have an online nuke med program and we have a student that needs placement. Can they come do it at your facility? Uh, but at the time, we weren't quite ready for that kind of thing. So um, then you ask about salary. Um, just go to my website and look for salaries there uh, or go to the ASRT website if you're a member they do a survey every year that shows all the salaries of all the modalities across the country. Um, and you can look for salaries on my site and it links to where to go if you don't know where to go. Um, easy, difficult to find employment. Mm. So every hospital is gonna wanna see a multi-modality tech. Uh, that's just how it is. They feel, you know, maybe you're an X-ray and MR. They're gonna want you an MR if they're shorthanded because that's where uh, they have less uh, people staffed. Um, it's harder to find an MRI tech than it is an, an x-ray tech. Um, but I'll caution you because unless you're in a small hospital where you're doing multiple things throughout the day, you know, like I was on the night shift at a really small hospital in Apache Junction, Arizona, and I did x-ray, CT, and ultrasound on the night shift, and I was the only person there. But there were nights when I wouldn't see any patients at all, and there were nights when I might see up to seven. I might do I might do five x-rays, two CTs, and an ultrasound or something like that. But um, most hospitals will not have you bouncing back and forth like that, especially a bigger hospital. They're just going to put you in one place and keep you there. So if you're an x-ray tech and you learn MR, you're probably just going to end up in MR uh, unless you're in, there in some kind of transitional period where MR is staffed, but they know somebody's retiring and you've been trained in, in MR. They'll have you start filling in for that person as they start to work their way out. And then you'll fill in full time once they retire and then they'll backfill you with somebody new in x-ray. Um, but you're typically not going to be asked now, x-ray and CT are close enough together. And, and I don't mean in modalities because they're completely different. But um, x-ray text and CT text tend to bounce back and forth uh, quite often. Again, depending on the size of the hospital, but even in good sized hospitals, um, it's not uncommon for an x-ray tech to go assist in CT if they get slammed or something. Because usually, you know, your extra, you always have more techs in your x-ray department. So if CT has, say, three techs running two scanners and they get hammered with multi, a multiple trauma, uh, it's not uncommon for an x-ray tech to go help. And you may put them on the table, position them. You may do the recons for them. You may assist in some way if you're, if you're trained. But um, other than that, you know, I, I don't have, I've never had a lot of MRI techs bouncing back and forth from x-ray to MRI if they knew both modalities. I've never had ultrasound techs bouncing back and forth to x-ray. Um, the only, you know, really shared uh, tech uh, has been x-ray and CT like I just described. Um, difficult, easy to find employment. So that's going to depend on your location. If you're in a super hyper populated area like Sacramento, California or Dallas, Texas or New York City or Chicago or something like that, um, you're going to have a harder time finding employment than if you're further out. I can tell you being in rural Idaho, we were we are always in need of technologists. At one point, just a couple of years ago, uh, my system uh, was and it's all in just Idaho was about 13 ultrasound techs short. Uh, we needed 13 techs throughout our, it was about a nine hospital system. So um, I hope that answers some of your questions. You may have more, feel free to post them on here if you want and I'll answer them. Um, not every modality is for everybody and that's why I encourage when you're at the end of your x-ray clinicals, most programs will allow you to sit and shadow some other stuff. I recommend you, you know, don't, don't spend it all on one modality. Try to hop around and look and see what they're like because these things are completely different. 
Uh, Nuke Med is completely different than anything else. Um, they get to kind of mix their own chemicals, you know, put their own stuff in some eggs and feed them to a person. And then they can't go to the movies for, for a day or whatever because they're emitting radiation. So <laughs> Nuke Med's really interesting. You got to check that out. And then IR, if you like standing on your feet, IR and Cath Lab are uh, very similar to the OR. If you're a second year x-ray tech, you should have been in the OR by now. And you, you stand on your feet a lot. Um, I personally couldn't, didn't, didn't want to pursue that. Um, I don't like standing in one place on my feet all day. I'd rather be moving around. Um, so IR and cath lab are, are lots of hands on lots of standing, lots of handing stuff back and forth to the, to the doctor and moving the table around and things like that. Uh, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and, uh, hope, I hope this made sense. If this is helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you can see when more of the stuff comes out and uh, I'll answer any questions you guys have. Thanks for watching.